Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we have right here live one of the leaders in RF cell radiation proof apparel, underwear, beanie hats, and t shirts. And check it out. Today we're going to learn the best ways of protecting yourself against cell phone radiation, finding out how big the market is, celebrities, presidents using this underwear. Crazy or not, you're going to be finding out how to make a startup. I mean, this guy's story is inspirational. Founded the company four years ago, got investment from America presented at Google, presented at CES, Consumer Electronics Show. He was one of his company, his company was actually trending up there with Samsung and LG. We're gonna get in the middle of the whole world of radiation proof apparel. Will we need it for the 5G future, 6G, all that kind of stuff. And where will we go as society studies, all that kind of stuff. So I'd like to welcome on the show, the CEO and co-founder of LAMS, Arthur, Arthur Menard. He, makes makes cell phone radiation proof underwear is that right that is right and actually we expanded so we're not just doing underwear but uh, full up our now you can get t-shirts beanies and we've got a bunch more products coming uh coming up soon and this is officially the coolest startup ever one because and i'm just gonna jump straight in and there's a picture i saw with you handing this uh this underwear to the french president is that true or false i got i got this picture right here he's holding it in his hands what, what's going on there yeah uh so we're actually pretty lucky when it comes to this we had access to a couple of french presidents so a emmanuel couple, macron just one. yeah yeah dude <laughs> so emmanuel macron and uh nicolas sarkozy are wearing uh are wearing lambs uh which is which is quite insane so, so they actually sorry. wear it they, they do. Uh, at least, so it's, I'll tell you the full story. Right. And this is actually the first time I'm, I'm talking about this in public, I think. Uh, so we, we had, uh, it started with uh, Nicolas Sarkozy, who happened to visit uh, LEMS someday after his presidency. And so we told him about the, about the product. He loved it. And he was like, can I, do you guys have any that I can, that I can take with me? And we're like, sure. Uh, and so that was our first president that, uh, that ever tried lambs, probably, at least he requested it. Uh, but then here, here comes the funny story. Um, a few months later, Emmanuel Macron visits a few French startups. Um, back then we were based out of France and, uh, including, including lambs. And we give him one, uh, we get the picture. It's great. It's awesome. Good press in France, whatever. And we come across uh, his wife two, three months after, and she comes to chat with us and she's like, hey, he loves his lambs. Uh, can I get more? <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so we happen to give her a few more as well. Uh, and yeah, so apparently, um, apparently, I uh, my home wear lambs. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to slow this down just a little bit because... One of, the, one of the hardest things to find is products that actually work. And I was lucky enough to test out your product and it actually reduced the radiation coming from the phone to my, my private parts. I actually tested it out using one of these RF, RF meters and legitimately it worked and you've got patented technology. And one of the hardest things I found shopping around in this world is that there isn't that much products out there that protects you from this wireless radiation because I guess from the media, what you're hearing is that it's, it's fake, it's not real, no one exists, and nothing's happening there. But there has been a lot of, I mean, research being done, links being done. So I just want to reverse back a little bit. You've been running this company now for four years. Is that right? Close to, yeah. Uh, yeah, close to four years. What made you get into this world? Uh, that, that's actually an amazing question. So I come from background of engineering and I've got a mind for solving problems uh, for a very, very long time. And one of my passion has been and still is optimizing my health. And, and I'm not talking about, you know, having needles stuck into my arms twice a day to measure my glucose levels so that I can make more conscious decisions, uh, but rather try and fight systems or, um, or, devices that can improve my health without me changing too many of my habits. Um, and I had heard about the danger of cell phone radiation for a while um, 
from my parents, from some of the media, from a lot of different sources, uh, until one day during dinner with friends, we all took out our cell phones and put it on the table and started discussing the fact that, yeah, we all heard about it, but we, uh, we were all carrying our cell phones in our pockets. Some of us had trackers, um, the Wi-Fi, obviously, and just the fact that we were just by the fact that society and technology was evolving, we're exposed to more and more radiation. And so at this stage, uh, this is when my probably my problem solving mind started, you know, cracking up. And I was like, okay, there has to be a way that we can mitigate this risk here. Um, that same night, I started researching what was the actual risks of uh, cell phone radiation. And this is the moment when I went, wow. Uh, the first thing that I figured out, uh, that I found, the first source that I found was the WHO, the World Health Organization, categorizing uh, wireless radiation as a class 2B carcinogen, which is the same as car exhaust fumes. And I would not be in this room right now for the entire day if a car was running in there. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, like, I'm just I'm not mad. But that's what I'm doing with uh, radiation. And so... That's when I started being like, okay, I need to find a solution. I started researching products online, um, found that, they, that there were a few, um, bought them, tried them with an EMF detecting device, and found out that they did not work. And that's when I started thinking about it from an engineering perspective. Uh, some of those products are stickers or cell phone cases. Uh, that claim to be reducing radiation. The fact is your cell phone communicates with the outside through radiation. So if you're actually blocking the radiation, you're canceling out the efficiency of your cell phone as, uh, as a device that gets access to the internet or can communicate. So obviously that can work. And there were a few clothing, um, uh, clothing pieces available out there, which similarly I tried, uh, tested, and did not work. And so... Um, with another engineer friend of mine, we set out to create a solution. We looked at how to do it from a physical standpoint, uh, from a physics standpoint, um, found out that the NASA spacesuits had an inbuilt radiation-proof technology. We figured that this probably worked. We used the same principle, integrated into garments, and that's how LEMS uh, was born. So you went, went in there you found a problem and as an entrepreneur, you went in and you developed a solution. Now, one thing I love about you guys is that you guys don't use fear-based marketing. So you say that you personally yourself did the research and you saw that this is a risk. The WHO classifies it as possibly carcinogenic. Possibly doesn't mean it is 100%, but you went ahead and you saw that, hey, there's a potential risk there, I'm gonna solve it. But you decided not to push the fear and you tried to make it fun so can you explain why you did that yeah so that was um that was a very conscious choice from the beginning um the first reason is because well first of all we the, the product was born because we were scratching our own our own itch right so i was trying to find a solution for myself so that i can keep using technology because i love technology and so we're with LEMS, we're positioning ourselves as a technology enabler rather than um, a company, rather than a whistleblower who is like, hey, we need to stop technology at all costs because that thing is terrible. Um, and so if we are taking the approach to say technology is awesome uh, and it allows us to live a much better life today, then we can't really be running around uh, screaming, oh my God, like we're all going to die from 5G. Let's stop it. It's terrible. Um, and the second aspect of it is that we work very, very hard to make our products amazing, even if you take out uh, radiation protection. So they're also antibacterial, heat diffusing. They're, I mean, you, you, you've tried them. They're pretty soft to the Comfy, touch. They fit yeah. well. They look good. Uh, I, mean, I mean, we've worked very, very hard on the products and i it was our feeling that if we were going out, going out, just talking about the issue, rather than thinking about the product, um, talking about the product, we would kind of kill this aspect that they're amazing products, and we're um, out there to make a brand that not only blocks radiation but also is one of your best basics um, in terms of, of of garments. And last but not least. Um, 
I just feel like it's not the right way to communicate with people. Like, I don't want to scare you into buying lambs. Um, there is already quite a few resources out there that explain the danger of self radiation and the current state of research. We count on media, and we might be wrong, but we count on media to do their job and <laughs> educate people. And, and from there, we believe that there is enough people sufficiently educated and enough people like you educating people uh, that we don't need to, you know, like try and educate people. And I mean, we'll never be a credible source for pure education. You know, like we're, we're, we're involved in this. Like it's in our interest to tell you that it's super dangerous. Um, so we don't like we're, uh, we want to be, we're in the next company. We don't want to be, taking advantage of, of people fearing um, the current situation. I don't know if it's a good answer. I never really thought about the why. And the, it's just very important for us not to do it. <laughs> no, it's, it's really interesting for me because, for example, you listed there that you put in antibacterial as a focus point as well. So it's not just about tackling cell phone radi radiation. You want to make the best possible product. And you're thinking, thinking, I assume, from the future point of view, this could be an issue. It could not, might not be an issue, but either way, you're protected with your product. Is that what you're coming to? Yeah, I mean, when you look at the state of research right now, it seems pretty obvious that it is an issue. The real question then is how big of an issue is it and uh, what is going to be the impact in 10, 20, 30 years from now um, when, you know, when we have been exposed to this amount of radiation for a very long time. But the research is pretty clear in the sense that it has a biological impact. We actually did some research as well ourselves um, in partnership with a few scientists uh, measuring the impact of cell phone radiation on your autoimmune system. Um, so, you know, um, fight and flight versus rest and, and digest. And we found out that when you're exposed to cell phone radiation, your immune system is triggered and your body gets into... Um, fight and flight mode, which is the reaction mode you'd have if you're, um, if you're sick, uh, if you've got a cut, it's essentially your immune system reacting to an external aggression. Um, and so we found very compelling arguments to say that your, cell, your body is not reacting very well to wireless radiation. So we do, like the, the main reason why we created in LEMS is because you know, we wanted to protect ourselves from wireless radiation. But at the same time, I like good clothing, man. <laughs> I was not willing to be wearing, you know, a piece of armor all day that would be uncomfortable as hell and look terrible whenever I would take out my pants for the underwear or, or, or when I would be wearing a T-shirt. And so we, um, we ended up uh, spending a lot of time working on a product itself, making it amazing as much as we could and um, and yeah making sure that if you switch to lens you're not going to regret your previous garments and being like well i guess i gotta trade something uh in order to be protected um so i guess we became an apparel company because of this but originally the the main reason why we created the company was uh, to mitigate the risk around uh wireless radiation all right ho hold up there because what you said is very interesting you said you did studies yourself with scientists and did you test, was it lab rats or did you do it on humans? We did it on humans. So it still is very, very early. And so far, we're still in the pre-study uh, level. So not enough. Um, not, we haven't repeated this enough uh, yeah. that it's enough times that it's actually something we can publish yet. But the, the, the pre-result... Exactly. So the, 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 the few results that we have so far are kind of incredible um, and meaning the moment someone is ex makes a phone call um, your so your immune system can be the state of your immune system and probably not the best one to explain this but the state of your immune system can be um, analyzed by looking at your heart rate variability over heart rate um, and what we find, what we found is that the moment you make a, send, a phone call, your body goes immediately into uh, fight and flight mode, um, meaning there is an external aggression. My immune system needs to correct this. And if you, if we cover you with lambs uh, with the t-shirt, for instance, afterwards, 
your body gets back into rest mode within the 10 minutes, roughly. And then if you make a cell phone, uh, if you make a phone call again, wearing maps this time, your body stays in rest mode. Which is kind of crazy. Yeah, that is crazy, man. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be that dramatic. I always heard that it was long-term health effects. Yeah, so it's it's something that that's why we're we're digging into this. The the documented mechanisms that uh, that are probably triggering that is that cell phone radiations are radiation, sorry, are polarized waves, and the polar and your cell membranes are polarized as well. And so the polarization of the radiation when hitting your cell um, triggers a defense mechanism from your cells, which essentially take it as an external aggression, and this cascades up to your immune system, which then reacts and um, and gets into this uh, this fight mode, essentially. So yeah, it's still is uh, very early to kind of comprehend this, but what's been documented uh, a lot is um, the fact that cell phone the exposure to wireless radiation increases your amount of free radicals and oxidative stress, which is essentially the impact of immune system not being in check. And it's the root cause of a lot of uh, underlying issues, such as cancer, such as neurological disease, uh, cardiovascular disease, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and that has been documented in quite a few studies as well. Um, so we're just trying to kind of get a sense of what's happening today when you're exposed to radiation. And, uh, and yeah, so we're, we're hoping to publish something soon. Oh, I got to say, I understand you're the CEO, you're not the scientist, and your studies are still in progress. But I just want to say thank you. Thank you for actually doing some studies. I mean, I've been doing a lot of research out there, and it's really hard to find. I guess you would be a biased study because you're selling, you have to be. Maybe you're going to get an independent verifier to prove that your study is correct and someone to repeat it independently. But thank you for at least doing some work to prove something out there. A lot of people do, they, they, they view the subject very religiously right now. It's, it's really crazy. They're either 100% yes, it's going to be bad or 100% no, it's impossible due to physics. I'm in the middle. I'm like, you know... <laughs> humans, humans, we're fascinating people. A light bulb, if I get it to flicker incorrectly, one in 4,000 people will fall down and have a seizure. <laughs> we're such fascinating people. We'll give someone an, a peanut, completely fine for me, boost my vitamin E. Someone else, another seizure. So humans are fascinating. The more research that's done, the better. I'm, I'm for you, going for technology, but you did say one word which is very, very feisty at the moment. You said 5G, 5G and MM wave. Do, does your product protect against that? I haven't tested 5G MM Wave myself. We don't have it over here in Australia. Have you done any tests with MM Wave yet? Uh, so we designed the product to be blocking 5G as well. Um, it's uh, from a physics standpoint, uh, we should be blocking it 99%. Uh, we're in the process of being certified right now for 5G by independent labs. Um, just touching real quick back on the previous topic uh, that you were talking about being a biased study, we're actually uh, currently having this study being done by an independent um, scientist uh, group. So we're not, uh, we're not influencing the results in any ways. However, uh, interestingly, I agree that there is, I mean, we're still funding it, so. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's, it's tough. It's just tough. You know, it is. Uh, we're, I mean, we're trying to, ask, I mean, we're, we're really not influencing the study at all, meaning we're just taking the results and we're like, okay, continue. Um, but the, uh, it, it's interesting what you said, because there is a very interesting factor um, that a lot of media report that scientists are, um, are currently not sure, at, and it's 50-50 whether there is an impact or not on health. And one scientist actually took a look at the overall studies and found that um, if the studies were, the, the source of funding of the studies had a major impact on the results. And so if you're taking out industry funded studies, and by industry I mean uh, telecommunication industry, uh, if you're taking these out and you just look at independently funded studies, then the ratio is not 50-50 anymore. It's rather 70-30. <laughs> and, uh, and the balance tips quite a bit when it comes to 
the measured impact of wireless radiation. Um, but anyways. Can, can I ask you a question, actually? Because, like, there's big international bodies, the ICNIRP and the WHO. How, how is it likely that someone like you with a study can influence their decision making? Like, when you put your study out there, do they actually take a look at it? Because WHO say they have a study themselves out for 2022. Can something like you, inf can someone like you influence them? No idea. Um, no clue, to be honest. Uh, one of the reasons why we started doing this study is because we were very interested to see if there were any short-term impacts on your ability to, on your immune system, essentially. And, um, and we've been, we have quite a few athletes um, today, like top athletes for top football teams here in the US. Um, I mean, we've got about 25 to 30 international level athletes right now uh, wearing our products. And so we, we started discussing with them and uh, we kind of wanted to measure the impact it could have on the performance as well. And that's how the whole immune system in check study came uh, to light. So originally we were studying this rather for top athletes and uh, for the WHO, which obviously the moment we have something that we can publish, we'll share with them. But big bodies like this, as you said, I'm, I'm not sure what impact we can have. Um, but, you know, if we can help the current state of science. Well, I'll tell you something. If you do get anything out there and you need it pushing to the public, I'm more than happy to get it to as many people. I don't, I don't have any connections myself, but hopefully someone watching this, anyone watching this, if you can share that information, get it to the right people, because there's a lot of people out there that are either 100% for or 100% against, and hopefully someone's gonna be connected. Someone might know someone. I'm more than happy to try to push. Research is, is what I believe in. Now, just one, one thing, one thing about you. You just said you have some top athletes using, using your products. Can you name drop some, or is it private? I don't wanna get you in trouble. It's okay if you can't. Uh, yeah, so I can't tell you the name of every single one of them because uh, some of them did not share this publicly and I want to respect the confidentiality of our clients. Uh, but a few that did share, uh, that did share it um, were Mitchell Robinson from the New York Nets uh, in the NBA, Nathan Stupar, American Football, New York Giants, Jordan Johnson, MMA fighter um, from USC, uh, UFC. UFC previously and uh, PFL now. Um, so yeah, we have a few, a few top, uh, top athletes wearing lands every day. Um, and, and we're hoping to make a difference on their performance as well. You know, something that I guess, I guess the audience that's watching here probably couldn't fathom before maybe watching this interview is the size of the market. So you got presidents, <laughs> you got athletes, you got celebrities and uh, you're, you're right now, you're based in LA, is that right? Yes, we are. And you have investors in LA? Yeah. So this is a, an international company over here and you're making orders all around the world, all for cell phone radiation underwear. <laughs> How big is this? That's crazy. Did you ever think this would be possible? It's a good question. When we started the company again, I was really designing the product in order to keep myself safe <laughs> originally uh, because I didn't want to take the risk right I was like I'm I don't want to gamble with this it's an easy step for me to protect myself I'm just going to create those special garments and underwear and, and and just make it for myself and then I had a bunch of friends around me who were like that's awesome can I get some and after 20 25 30 friends asking me for this I was like holy cow like there is actually demand so I started asking for my friends to prepay for this if I had to create like, you know, like hundreds of uh, underwear. <laughs> I, um, I wanted some commitment from them and this is how it all started. And the more I dug into this, the more I realized, well, actually, like um, kind of everyone should be wearing this uh, given the current state of research and, and the fact that you shouldn't really be messing with your health, especially when there are easy steps to take like this. Um, and yeah, so now I'm, we're working hard to make this uh, a new basics and uh, making sure that everyone gets access to them and at least hear about them. And that's where uh, it's awesome to have people like you sharing our product with, uh, with the world. Um, 
but yeah, it's uh, it's been an incredible ride, and I feel very very fortunate to um, to have started Lambs and and that the the the, the story turned out to be what it is today because we we've had an incredible journey. Uh, we've met amazing people along the way. Um, and I mean, we went to CES, which is the world's largest consumer electronic show, uh, just wearing boxers. Like we, we did a few crazy stuff like this, which, uh, we, we had advertising in the Paris subway with, um, synonyms for the word bulls um, as a cloud word uh, everywhere. Like we, we did a few fun stuff that I'm gonna remember my entire life, that's for sure. And uh, we're fortunate now, now to be protecting tens of thousands of people around the world and that feels very, very good to know that we're making an impact on so many people's lives. Now, I got a couple of questions to ask and one, I wanna just dig into 5G, but I'm gonna go back to CES and all that kind of amazing stuff that you've done. But regarding the 5G rollout, so it's cell phone masks are going out everywhere. What do your investors think of this? Because for you, it's a business opportunity for growth, right? Or yeah, I mean, it is and it's not right. Like the we're already super exposed to wireless radiation, uh, whether it's from your Wi-Fi, whether it's from everything. Uh, 5G is going to increase the amount of exposure that we have. So I guess increase the need for our product. Um, but 5G is also, to be honest, like I'm rather an advocate in f outside of the, the business interest that, that we just discussed. Um, 5G is going to be amazing. Yeah. Thanks to 5G, we're going to be able to power self-driving cars. Um, we're going to be able to power a lot um, of the AI and um, amazing technology developments that are currently in the making. And so... Uh, that's going to be possible thanks to 5G because we need super powerful internet everywhere in order to do this. So again, like a lot of people are against 5G because it's more powerful waves um, and we've, again, never tested, but to be honest, we never tested the impact of 4G either um, on, on human health. Uh, on our end, we're like, it's going to be amazing. And we... And thankfully, we're offering a solution that allows you not to be impacted by 5G. Uh, but from a, from a technological standpoint, 5G is beautiful. So you're on the optimist side of things, where I guess the more research that's done, the more you can dial the settings. Maybe if it's too powerful, you can dial it back down. But the fact that we're all going to be connected is going to open up new ventures. And that's a positive for not just you guys, because you're going to be selling the solution. <laughs> in a weird way, <laughs> but I guess you're a big startup ecosystem kind of guy. I read that you're a serial entrepreneur, you love the startup ecosystem, so you're forward to technology. You don't want to stagnate the human race, I guess. Yeah, um, that's, that's totally right. And you're right as well to say that on the optimistic side, I think if you're a startup founder, you have to be optimistic because all odds are against you. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. so, uh, for sure. And so you, you have to be an optimistic. I definitely am. Uh, but I'm also a technology lover. I couldn't have imagined your product would be in existence, being used by presidents, celebrities, all that kind of stuff. I couldn't your brain, that was like an instant going to fail. That was like, a, all these, the Yo app, what happened to that one? They got investment from, <laughs> where did that one go? <laughs> Down to fail, but it's a product. But I'm just gonna go back. You said CES. Now CES, I saw you had reporters in their underwear, BBC, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> now, I'm reading articles from the BBC saying, you know, wireless radiation has been disproven by scientists. I don't know why they're writing this. I don't know why, maybe they're just trying to dial down the hysteria maybe that's that's why and that's okay because it is a bit hysterical at the moment but how did they react to your product was it just a giggle or did they say maybe this could work i mean i mean you never know with reporters uh with there is we've had very weird interviews where reporters get it get it and they actually ask for the product they leave with like five of them and then they're going to write something completely different uh, because that sells more ink probably or Got it. and i don't want to generalize there are amazing reporters out there and we have very good relationship with a few of them but um yeah it's it's uh it's hard to know um but we had a very very a good reaction during ces uh from reporters who 
we're very intrigued by the products. And again, like the, the positioning that we've taken with the company that, we've, that we still have is we're not against uh, technology. And so if you're a reporter, if I come to you and I'm like, hey, uh, all this technology, you're about to die. It's awful. You're going to develop so many cancer. You're not even going to be able to move. Like, you know, like, you're going to be like, sure. yeah, I don't want to hear it. And please, like, stop this. Like, stop the fear mongering. It's terrible. Whereas our, our, our approach has always been like, hey, look at the research out there. And yeah, it doesn't look great. We've created a solution. And you can keep on using technology. Don't change any of your habits. It's great. So we're trying to just introduce a better way to, you know, a better solution and not tell you to stop smoking, but essentially we're like, hey, you can keep smoking, except nice. that this cigarette is, is, is completely harmless. I like that. I like that a lot. Or like nicotine patches, that kind of stuff. Yeah, or um, the best example that we always take is the, the, the seatbelt. You know, like if you look at a car. Perfect. Um, if you look at a car and you get into a car, you've got a, you've got a risk and, and you just look at the studies and the physics out of it. You're like, okay, well, you've got a risk of crashing and dying. Now, if you put the seal belt, your seal belt, you're reducing your risk significantly and it's just a small gesture. And the fact that there are seat belts in cars doesn't mean that cars are bad, <laughs> you know? Uh, they essentially mitigate the risk associated with cars and cars still allows us, and cars still is, uh, allow us to do amazing things. And so similarly with technology, we're creating a seat belt here. Um, and we're pretty excited about this. So I know I introduced you and I've been introducing you as the guy that made the underwear. But that's incorrect, right? Because you are making other products. Because a lot of people, they want caps, they want jumpers, they want coats. They want you to a deal with maybe Armani and Versace and put it in their fashion wear. What other products are you making and how are you going to get this more widespread? Yeah, so currently we have uh, underwear, t-shirts, beanies. Um, that's not related, but we started doing face masks to help with the current pandemic as well. And we're fortunate to be dealing with Silver uh, with our products on a uh, on a daily basis. And so Silver has apparently antiviral properties uh, that have been documented quite extensively. So we might be creating face masks that are more, that might make a difference for essential workers. So we're, we're very happy to be able to make a difference um, during these troubled times. Uh, but yeah, right now our four main products three main products are uh, underwear, t-shirts, and beanies, and we're working on new products that will come out very soon, um, but I can't, say, uh, I can't say much more right now. Is there any chance you can do a deal with like a Kmart and get your, your I guess, your patented technology in the essentials kind of, kind of close, or is that a bit far-fetched? No, that's, that's totally a possibility at some to stage. Lose. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, it's it's something that we're probably gonna start looking into in a couple of years. Um, right now, we're very much focused on delivering the best products out there. That our clients are are really. I mean, our clients are amazing. They they've been helping us from the start. Uh, decide what what are the next products that we want to come out with. We're getting hundreds of messages a day with suggestions from our clients uh, as to what we should come up with next and how to improve our current client uh, products and so on and so forth. So we have a lot of work already <laughs> uh, in our pipeline uh, due to this. Uh, but the moment we get bored, we'll start going and talk to bigger brands for sure. But right now, we're trying to serve um, our, our community as, much, as best as we can. So I guess, guys, you hear that? You guys watching? at home during this situation. Make sure you submit as many suggestions as possible because they really need more. <laughs> hundreds a day, hundreds of ideas. I was, gonna tell, I was gonna pitch an idea for you. I was gonna say pregnancy wear. I, I looked at it. It's a, a lot of a conspicuous topic. I've seen Wi-Fi routers with a pregnancy mode being released. That's a bit crazy for me. And I've seen studies linking all these kind of bad stuff. And was, there's a lot of concerned parents out there. But I've seen the current solutions, they've been proven by the Chinese government of all governments as not working properly. So if we can get someone of your mind with some scientists to deliver something that could actually work, that would be amazing. It's definitely, it's definitely in our mind. Um, 
and we'll probably tackle it at some stage. Uh, we're trying our best to, you know, like again, since every single product that we come up with, we're trying to make it amazing. Uh, we have a long development time to make sure that one, it works from you know protection standpoint, and B, that it's it's great and that people love it because we don't want to come up with well, shitty products, essentially. Um, so we have a long development time and long development cycle for most of our products, but we're going as fast as we can. And love the idea. I appreciate it. And the reason why, and, and it's, it's what you said is actually something that has been very, very tough in the beginning, which is that there are a bunch of fake products out there which just do not work. Because unless you have an EMF detection device at home and a good one costs somewhere around $200, um, you're not going to be able to test the solution. So either you trust the test reports that, um, or whatever the company says, and in our case, we have our test reports available on the homepage of our website for people to take a look at. And, and we've had a ton of people like you testing it and sharing the tests with, uh, with the world. So we're, we're hopefully in a situation where we're a bit more credible, but, um, but yeah, the, the, for most companies, it's kind of you kind of have to trust them on their word, and unfortunately, their word is not worth a lot in a lot of cases. <laughs> that's that's the sad reality of the current market, and that was very tough to navigate at the beginning. Um, we're we're fortunate to have been able to get the our brand out there as a, as a very credible and serious brand for uh, for this issue. All right, I think I've taken up enough of your time, or do you have a bit more? I got millions of questions, but I know you've only had half an hour for this interview. No, you can keep firing. Like uh, we moved it, uh, yeah, we moved it to a better time for me. So feel free to keep on firing them. All right, so you're seeing the face behind one of the biggest companies in EMF wear protection out there. Did you actually think it was that big? Well, let me tell you a bit of facts about our man Bernard. He was in French Forbes magazine in top 30, under 30. What was that like, mate? What was that like as a, as a human being being put alongside, was it M Mbappe, the French national superstar footballer? The same as uh, po Paul Bog Pogba? <laughs> Sorry, I can't even say the names right. <laughs> How did I feel being honoured by your country like that? It, I mean, I'm not going to lie, good, but um, it's also for me, I really take it as rather a recognition of my amazing team <laughs> um, because I'm, I'm one of the people behind it and we've got amazing people working very, very hard on making the company, uh, on making amazing products and, and making sure that our clients are satisfied and happy and, uh, and that we we are where we are today. So I'm one of the pawns on <laughs> who are working towards this, but I can't take all the credit to myself. So to be honest, I was rather humbled um, when I received the award, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing. How did you find to... out? What did they do? Did, you, did they just publish it or they let you know beforehand? Oh, no, they just published it. Uh, I, <laughs> I actually found out through one of my friends. Uh, <laughs> who sent me the article and was like, hey, congrats. Uh, I think he sent me a picture of the magazine. He was like, hey, congrats. And I was like, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so it came rather as, as a surprise. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's great to be recognized. And it's great, especially that the issue and the solution that we're providing is getting light by, um, by media and that uh, they recognize that we're working on something super important here. And I guess that's something really amazing about having, having an idea and putting it into practice because you just, you founded your ideas four years ago. You went into a startup competition. I saw your TED talk. This guy's got a TED talk on YouTube. It's actually very inspirational. You, you drew a little sketch on your idea and you ended up winning, winning the contest and they flew you out to America and you pitched at Google. Is that right? You presented your idea at Google? What, what yeah. was that like? <laughs> that was fun. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, that was fun. Um, it, you know, it's small. I mean, if you go back to the origins of any startups, you've got crazy stories like this. Like we got started with lands with like, we were super small. We had an idea. We didn't have a product yet. We were working on prototypes and we happened to stumble across a few competitions that got us to, um, 
to, to, to the US and we realized how big the market could be here. And that's why we're here today. And so the, the journey has been, has been incredible. <laughs> and when we look back, you know, like when you create a company and you're in the day to day operation, we're trying, we're very, we're looking at ourselves as in, we're, we're looking at ourselves thinking we don't go fast enough there. We could do better. Uh, we need to serve our clients better. We need to, we need to, we need to, we need to. But then when we sometimes take the time to turn back and look at what we've done, we're like, wow, that, that was a crazy journey <laughs> going from, you know, uh, drawing sketches on, on pieces of paper to uh, protecting tens of thousands of people soon to be hundreds of thousands. Uh, that, that feels very, very good. Okay, I want to ask you a question, okay? Since you're kind of like an expert in this field, you're designing gear to protect yourselves, a lot of people are working from home. A lot of people are maybe working next to their Wi-Fi router or a lot of people maybe are concerned with these cell towers popping up. Do you have any tips, just stuff you can do naturally to protect yourself a little bit more? Yeah, um, I mean, so on this, I just want to start with one thing, which is the reason why we've designed lamps in the first place is because we don't want to start using, stop using technology and we don't want to stop uh, and we don't want to change our habits, especially. So I'm probably not the best person to give tips, um, but <laughs> here are a few tips that we're, uh, that we're implementing ourselves. Um, the first one is turn off your Wi-Fi router as, at night. Um, you're probably not going to browse the internet in the middle of the night um, unless you're you. <laughs> and um, so you can just, you know, like uh, have a switch and switch it off in, during the night, turn it back on in the morning. Can I just say something on that point? Can I just say something about the point? I've actually started turning off my Wi-Fi router at night and I've been sleeping a lot better. And this is anecdotal, like don't, this isn't a study, this is just me personally, it might be placebo, but honestly I've started doing this the last couple of weeks because I usually leave my Wi-Fi on to do nightly backups, but I've just started turning off and I've just started waking up a little bit more fresher. It's weird, I don't understand it, I'm still trying to compute it, but yeah. This is that one. That one's pretty interesting. What else do you have? Uh, well, same with your cell phone. Put it in airplane mode yeah, during the definitely. night, especially if you're sleeping with your cell phone next to you, which a lot of people do because they use it as an alarm. I do, um, but it's in airplane mode. That's the second step. Um, use um, earphones when you're making a phone call or at the very least, uh, put it in uh, speaker mode so that you don't have your cell phone against your ear. I think that's it, man. Like, aside from this, um, avoid um, carrying your cell phone around in your pocket when you're at home. Just leave it on the table. Um, wear lamps. <laughs> 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 I had to say this one. Uh, no, that's that's what company, comes to man. mind. <laughs> and I guess don't stress about it because it's been scientifically proven that fear gets you to be more susceptible to bacteria and viruses, as crazy as it is. Just you being scared makes you more prone to disease. How crazy is that? Yeah, the good news is the product is antibacterial, so, <laughs> but <laughs> more, more seriously, yeah. I mean, it's, and, and, and at the end of the day, that's one of the main reasons why we're very happy to be wearing them, because we provide peace of mind to our clients and they don't have to worry about this anymore. And um, I remember a lot of my friends being like, thanks so much, because now, my mom stops bugging me <laughs> about my cell phone in my pocket all the time. Like, it's kind of like this piece of mind of knowing that no matter how bad the issue might be on your health on the long term, you're covered from this day on, essentially. And, uh, and yeah, that you're not taking a risk um, on gambling your long term health. It feels pretty good. All right, man. I've got some quick fire questions for you. Do pendants work? Do you know those crazy, you know, like stickers that you stick on your body or on your cell phone to reduce radiation? Do they work? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I've never tested them. A lot of people use them. I don't know. I don't understand it. Maybe it's psychological, but do they work? You said hell no. Quote. I mean, there is no physical base for this type of products to be working at all. Like, there's just no... It, I mean... I, yeah, there's just no reason why this could work, can work. We've tested a bunch of them. They obviously don't work. We tested them. 
yeah, I mean, we've tested all the fake products, dude. Like, it's, and I don't want to be getting into this because it gets my blood okay. running. But no, it, it doesn't work. And the reason why it doesn't work is, again, if your cell phone is emitting radiation, it's because it's connected to antennas um, in order to transmit information. If you were to um, block the radiation from your cell phone, your cell phone would not be connected to the internet. So anything that you put on your cell phone that is supposed to radiate radiation, you can be 99% sure it doesn't work. And oftentimes, it's been shown to increase the amount of radiation because it can mess with your antenna. And when your antenna is not properly um, getting the signal, your cell phone emits more in order to find signal. So uh, in a nutshell, no, they do not work, um, unfortunately. <laughs> Okay, next up, that was interesting. Do you own Bluetooth headphones, in particular AirPods Pro? Just want to know. I do not. Any and I will why? not. <laughs> you will not. No, I mean, the reason is um, so Bluetooth is a much less powerful uh, type of radiation. So it's already better than out of the two, I'd probably choose this over having my cell phone right against my head. Um, that said, this type of uh, your ear is essentially like a direct access to your brain, um, and just having Bluetooth um, going straight into my brain whenever I'm making a call doesn't, or I'm listening to music, is not very enticing for me. Um, so I'd rather use corded ones. Um, it's not a big effort to have this over um, Bluetooth ones. Um, but again, like at the end of the day, as I was saying, we're created lamps with the idea to protect ourselves um, as much as we could without changing our habits. So if I were, if I loved my Bluetooth headphones, I would probably keep on using them because I don't want to be getting into a crazy mode. But in this specific case, corded ones are not a big um, change for me. So I'd rather use that. Okay, quick five questions. What was it like seeing? I don't know how to describe it, but like your underwear in the Paris subway, just advertised, just right there, right there with some dodgy, dodgy uh, terminology on there. <laughs> uh, that was, that was fun. How much did you <laughs> love? That was really fun. Um, how many selfies was... did you take? <laughs> A couple. Um, <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you what, like, I, I've been very fortunate uh, to go to uh, some of the, I mean, one of the best engineering schools in in France. And so my grandmother never understood why I would go and create companies because that's very stupid. I should rather go to big companies and, you know, have a normal career. So um, the selfie was more intended for her to be like, hey, you see, you can do actually cool stuff when you're an entrepreneur. But aside from this, uh, what was really, really interesting when we did this campaign, uh, we, we did a few in the subway, was whenever I would find people um, taking pictures of the advertising and sending it to their friends or whatever, but like being like, that's awesome taking a picture. And I'm right next to them. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> it's working. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, and the first time I found one of our advertisements in the Paris subway, because they don't tell you, I guess they send you a list of where they are. Uh, but anyways, I was more like, oh, I'll just take this away and we'll figure out if I, if I find any. And the first one that I found, I found it because someone was taking a picture of it. Um, and that was awesome. That, that, that felt very, very good. Um, this was all the brainchild of uh, my partner, who's uh, one of my partners, I've got two partners, uh, who's um, taking care of marketing with the company. And uh, he actually won an award that year for the best communication campaign uh, uh, from startup. So because we just had cr a crazy viral factor uh, associated with this campaign, that was, that was really, really cool. All right, now I wanna just wrap this up a little bit and I wanna ask you a question. Where do you see the future of wireless technology and your solution going? Because worst case, will we have to be wearing a, a nano suit all over our bodies to protect ourselves from 6G, 7G, 10G? Or is there some sort of, I guess with more research, will we come up with a, a medium where we know what the safe levels are? I mean, I'm not, I, I obviously don't have the perfect answer because I can't see into the future. Um, what I think is from, from what I've 
from what I've read and from what I understand, what's super important um, today is to protect your main organs because they're the ones who are most impacted by um, the potential adverse effect of cell phone radiation. And so that's why we focus on beanies, uh, t-shirts, underwear to try and protect, you know, brain, essential organs, and private parts. Um, then are we going to need to wear a full suit, a full body suit? Hopefully not. Um, <laughs> uh, are we going to find safe levels? Uh, I think that from the mechanisms that have been highlighted, it's probably unlikely um, unless we completely change the type of technology, which might happen. Um, but the but yeah, I mean the, the current the current trend is rather towards more powerful waves than towards safer and <laughs> like less powerful uh, technologies um, because it's just you need to transmit more information. So I don't see this evolving in a way that uh, we're going to be a lot safer in the short term. Uh, in the long term, probably. I mean, technologies evolve. Like what we have today is probably very different from what we're going to have tomorrow. Uh, just like if you were asking a hundred years ago to someone how how are we going to be what is going to be the most important technology internet is like, what is going to be the best application from electricity and having the idea of the internet is like it's mind blowing um, so uh, I'm not sure I answered your question but I'm not sure how I can answer it no no it's it's, it's a fair point we don't know I guess with technology with better technology we might get technology to improve the better technology in ways that we don't know. Maybe we'll have a force field, you know, protect ourselves, or maybe we'll be part of this AI super AIG monster and we'll be better. What I find super, uh, super interesting and also very exciting about technology, especially where we're at right now, uh, is that we're really on an exponential curve. And um, it's very, very hard when you're on, on, there is an amazing article on this, um, on the blog, Wait But Why? Um, on AI, which is that due to the fact that we're on a, uh, on a curve that is an exponential, it's almost impossible for us to imagine what tomorrow is going to be like because we can't, our brain is not made to kind of comprehend what an exponential is. And we look back at what technology was a few, a few years ago and where we are today and we're like, oh, so like but in the next few years, we're going to improve the same amount, but it's completely different. Uh, we are probably going to improve a, a lot more than we can today expect. So impossible to know where we're going to stand in even 10 years. Um, but, uh, but that's also very exciting. All right. I'd like to thank you for your time on this interview. First, I'd like to say, remind you, thank you for the research that you're doing. Please let me know when you get some concrete results. I know you had some anecdotal results there. Second, anyone's interested in your products, check out the website, getlambs.com. Is that right? Yeah. Getlambs.com. Underwear, beanie hats, and t-shirts. And another thank you. Thank you for helping out LA. I, I see that you're doing the 5 million mask challenge where you're trying to support essential healthcare, healthcare workers. And I noticed that you even said you'll sell the items at cost to essential workers. So that's a very kind and generous, generous offer from you. And thanks for inspiring us. Like, uh, I didn't actually think someone <laughs> doing underwear could grow so big. Like, I'm, I'm not laughing at you. I'm actually amazed by how much inspiration you've potentially given a lot of people out there. Starting up a company is uh, a big, big challenge. And you've shown that with the craziest of ideas, it's the craziest of ideas, right? <laughs> like telling your friends and your family, would this work? And it seems like it is. So thanks for that. Yeah, it's always the craziest of ideas that uh, work the best. And you have to be a little crazy if you want to start a company, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, it's been a great ride. We're very fortunate to be able to help our communities and help people out there to protect themselves without changing their habits. And, uh, and yeah, we'll see what the next uh, few years uh, um, are reserving for us. But uh, it's, we're, we're happy to, to be there and we're very excited about what's, uh, what's coming next. Thanks so much for taking the time to chat, Ash. That was awesome. So guys, I hope you learned a bit about the world of creating RF radiation proof garments. That's right, we're in a world of a future where we might need these nano suits to protect ourselves from 6G, 7G, all that kind of stuff. Or potentially with studies, we might learn a little bit more about the technologies of the future. But end of the day, I gotta say, very inspirational story. 
Startup founder founded a company four years ago on some of the craziest, one of the craziest ideas ever. Pitch that Google got investment from America is now selling to celebrities. So you guys out there, if you think you have a crazy idea, if there is a problem out there, go ahead, get in the world of startup and make that difference in the world today. Hope you guys enjoyed the show.